Wow, what a great morning, eh? Amen? Are you there still? <laughs> I said to Mark, hey Mark, I don't have to preach. I think the Lord's done it. He said, okay, just give us a 15 minute. So I said to Mara, he said 15. She says, does he know that? That's impossible. I said, God says nothing's impossible for him. <laughs> Amen. All right, so here we go. Mike, you sit black, hodl fast because we're about to take off. Amen. Okay, this is going to be the speed version, so you're going to have to maybe listen to it again. Amen. I'm actually going to speak tonight, this morning's message, just because of time. But um, I really do feel I have a word for you that, that, that is going to set you up for victory and success into the future. Sit on the hill and Gareth and Ainsley. The amazing thing, you know, in Hebrews chapter 10, verses 16 to 9, it says that we have been uh, given access to approach uh, the throne room of God confidently and boldly through the blood of Jesus. Yeah. Amen? Through the living way that was opened us for, through the curtain of his body that was torn. And it's speaking about the holy of holies. Amen? And it's speaking about how Jesus, when he died on the cross and he said, Tetelestai, it is finished, that curtain taught, was torn from top to bottom. The initiative came from God to man. We can only be justified, we can only be saved, we can only enter God's presence because God wanted men in his presence. Yeah. Isn't that an amazing thing? And so we need to understand that we are clothed with Christ and we are covered in his blood, amen? Yeah. But, then the, but then we're also clothed in his righteousness, amen? He, the righteousness that is his has been imparted to us. That when God looks at us, he sees us righteous in Christ Jesus. I love what one of the leaders shouted out. Mark said, are you perfect? He said, yes! <laughs> and he's 100% correct. There's a scripture there on your notes. It says there, by one sacrifice, he is made perfect forever. Those who are being made holy. You need to know that, my friend, before, apart from Jesus, we were dead in our sins, dead in our transgressions, and our spirits were dead. Completely morse do it. Without God and without hope in the world. But! What's Afrikaans for but? Mar! Mar. <laughs> God breathed His life into our spirits. And God gives life to the dead and calls things that are not as they. He breathed His life into our spirits. And we were perfected in our spirits. Instantaneously we were born again. <laughs> Amen! Now what? When you look inside you, your soul, your mind, your will, your emotions, that thing is still being renewed. Amen? And so in that respect, we're not perfect leaders. But God is taking what is in, outside and he's putting it on the inside of us. Amen? Now how you do that and how you access the life of God and the presence of God and the spirit of God with that is in his throne room. So first point today, Hebrews 10, 16 to 19. You have got access. You have got a right into the very throne room of God. Amen. Hebrews chapter 4, verses 16 or 19, it says this, that we've got this great high priest, Jesus, the Son of God, who went through the heavens, who was tempted in every way without sin. Amen. But we can, therefore, we can come confidently and boldly into the throne room of our gracious God to, to receive mercy and to find grace to help us in our time of need. Mercy is God's forgiving grace. The blood of Jesus covers us. But grace, because you find mercy and, re and you, you find mercy, you receive mercy and you find grace. Grace is much bigger than mercy. Mercy is a part of grace. It's 5% of grace. Grace is God's empowering to do what he's called you to do. Yeah. Amen. And my friend, you, where do you find both mercy and grace? Where do you find it? In the throne room. In the throne room. In the holy place. The highest place of all authority on the planet, you've got access. Okay, 12 minutes. Thank you, Myra. Go over with me. That's introduction. That's the foundation of our faith. Now, I'm going to show you what that grace, what that, the blood of Jesus gives you access to. Just one element of it. Um, geez, I'm drunk here this on the thing. I'm falling all over. Revelations 4, verse 1. After the look, this, I looked, and there before me was a door standing open in heaven. Do you know that in John chapter 10, Jesus says that he's the good shepherd. 
He's the gateway for the sheep. He's the door for the sheep. That the sheep will go in and out and foul pasture through him. I am the way. I am the truth. And I am the life. Jesus is everything. Amen. And this open door in heaven is Jesus himself. And we have got the right to access heaven's presence because of Jesus and his blood. Amen. And I heard a voice speaking to me, sounded like a trumpet and said, Come up here! And I will show you what must take place after this. Can you hear the invitation of heaven to you, City on the Hill Church? Come up here! Come up to my throne room. Come and sit on my lap. Revelations 3, this is the verse before it. It says, Jesus says this to the Laodicean church. Most probably the worst church in the book of Revelations. But to that church, he says, to, I'm standing at the door knocking. And if you open your heart and you come and you let me in, I will eat with you, you will eat with me, and I will give you the right to sit on my throne with me, just like the, my father gave me the right to sit down on his throne with him. Right. Literally, get the picture of the father on the throne, Jesus on the father's lap, you sitting on Jesus' lap. Come up here. What an invitation, sitting in the hill church. And I will show you what must take place after this. God has got the ability to open your eye, the eyes of your heart to see what he wants you to show you. God has got the ability to open the ears of your heart for you to hear what God is wanting to show you. And it's the only way you can be this. The only way that you can be a city in a hill, that you can be a light to the nations, is if you have your spiritual ears opened by God, you have your spiritual eyes opened by God. And the Bible says that out of the overflow of the heart, the mouth will speak. A heart that is turned on seeing, a heart that is turned on hearing, will always overflow with the things of God. It gets better than that. Then the lame limbs will no longer be lame, but they will be healed. Hands healed, doing the works of God. Laying hands on people for healing and gifting. Laying hands on people for authority like we did today. Limbs, legs. Walking in the ways of God. Stand at the ancient path and look at, stand at the cross and look, ask for the ancient path that you may walk in it. You see, sit in the hill church. God's heart and God's desire for you and every person in this church is that you would be spirit filled, spirit led. So, eyes of your spirit, seeing what God is saying, ears of your spirit, hearing what God's saying out of the overflow of that, a spirit anointed tongue to speak the words of God, anointed hands to be Jesus' hands. Touching a world that is broken and needs to be restored. And then spiritual feet walking in the ways of God. Taking the word of God, anointed by the spirit of God, and empowered to be salt and light to the city, to this country, to this continent, and to the nations of the earth. Where do you, and all of it is found in the throne room. Isn't that incredible? At once, verse 2, I was there in the spirit. And before me there was one seated on the throne in heaven. And there was a... Uh, the one who sat there had the appearance of Jasper Carnell, a rainbow resembling an emerald encircled the throne. I don't have time to unpack that, but that speaks of the new covenant. The rainbow is the new covenant cut in Jesus' blood. It's God's advertising and telling you, hey, you have free access here because of my blood. I'm going to skip a few verses and go to verse 5. From the throne came flashes of lightning, rumblings, and peals of thunder. Before the throne, seven lamps were blazing. These are the seven spirits of God. Are there seven spirits? There's one spirit, one faith, one baptism. It's a bad translation. Someone's Bible says the seven manifestations of the Spirit of God? Yeah. Yes, exactly. What I'm so sad is that I hear a lot about the fruits of the Spirit, and a lot I hear about the gifts of the Spirit, but I haven't heard the seven manifestations of the Spirit of God spoken about. And today, I'm going to end with speaking to you about God's seven manifestations of His Holy Spirit that we have got access to in the throne room of God, that we need to go into that throne room, we need to access that boldly and confidently, receive mercy, forgiveness where we've messed up, but much more importantly, access that presence, find the grace. It says this, eh? you receive mercy because you come in with a debt, but you find grace because you come in to find strength for what's coming. God gives you his grace proactively, not reactively. Yes. Did Jesus ever once have to go into God's presence for mercy? What do you think, Sidney Hill? You're right, no. Why? 
Because he was sinless perfection. And mercy is receiving forgiveness of sins. But did Jesus often get into God's presence? Look, go read the book of Luke. As was his pattern, Jesus got up before the sunrise and he went to pray. After feeding the 5,000, he stays on the mountain. He prays and he walks on water. Before he anoints the 12, he prays all night. Then he, then he names the 12. Jesus was often found in God's presence. But he was not accessing God's presence for mercy. He was accessing God's presence for grace. To find grace to help him in the day. To help him in his ministry. Let me tell you something. If you're accessing God's presence more for grace than you are for mercy, you will not need as much mercy. Because God called you to, to him who overcomes. You can overcome sin. You can overcome Satan. You can overcome the world when you spend time with your father and you are ablaze a light to sit in here for him. I mean, now what are these seven spirits? What are these seven manifestations of the Spirit of God? Who'd like to know? Come on. Go with me to Isaiah chapter 11 from verse 1 to 3. We're going to read it, and it says this. A branch will come up from the root of Jesse. Yeah, I'm quoting it, but see, I'm trying to get there at the same time because of time. Just slow down, boy. There we go. A shoot, a shoot will come up from the stump of Jesse. From his roots, a branch will bear fruit. Obviously, speaking of Jesus. Notice that Jesus is rooted in the Spirit. Know that he's rooted in God. Amen? The Spirit of the Lord will rest on him. Number one. The spirit of wisdom, number two. The spirit of understanding, number three. The spirit of counsel, number four. The spirit of power, number five. The spirit of knowledge, number six. And the spirit of the fear of the Lord, number seven. My friends, these are the seven manifestations of the spirit of God that you and I have got free, unhindered access to 24-7, 365. We can approach God's throne with confidence, boldness, and receive His Spirit and get these seven manifestations flowing through our lives. Who wants them? Look at verse 3 before I unpack these. And He, speaking of Jesus, will delight in the fear of the Lord. Listen, He will not judge by what He sees with His eyes, nor will He decide by what He hears with His ears, but with righteousness He will, give, he will judge the needy, and with justice He will give decisions for the poor, poor of the earth. This shows us that God is not so much interested in what we see physically and what we hear physically. He's not too worried about corona. He's not too worried about things that are going on. He wants you to see with eyes of the heart. He wants you to hear with the eyes of the heart. He wants you to get into heaven, see what heaven sees, and then bring heaven to earth. And that's how you shine a light, sit in the hill church, to those around you. Amen. Now think of the implications of this for, for your ministry, for your business, for your parenting, for your marriage. You have got no, you've got every right to eat from this table and you've got every right to get every one of these seven manifestations. Do you know that the Holy Spirit is a little bit bigger than Google? <laughs> Think of Proverbs where it says, Our wisdom was beside the Lord when he made the earth. Wow. Yeah. Our understanding, our knowledge. The Spirit was hovering over the deep. God spoke and He sent Jesus and Jesus and the Spirit made the whole universe and everything in it. You have got the Holy Spirit right here. Your body, the temple of the Spirit of God and these seven manifestations live inside of you. Yo, this is amazing. If you get what I'm saying, my friend, you will have a competitive advantage at school, in business, in your marriage, in your parenting like you've never had in your life before. Amen? Amen? My people are destroyed because they don't know the access they have to my presence. Those who cling to worthless idols forfeit the grace that could be theirs. I don't want to forfeit the grace that I can find in His presence because I'm worshipping idols. And I don't want to have a lack of knowledge, therefore not get into His presence. Let's think about this quickly. I'll unpack it in the last two minutes I have. The Spirit of the Lord. God at His most basic level. When you cut God, you know what He is. He is love. God is love. My friends, you lack love. You lack love for your wife, your husband, your kids, your church, your business, your country, whatever, fellow countrymen. My friend, don't be religious. Ooh, I'm going to try harder. I'm going to work it up in the flesh. Flesh gives birth to flesh and it counts for nothing. But spirit gives birth to spirit and brings forth life. You go to God. You crawl in there. Your heart may be racist. 
And let me tell you, that can be uh, tribal racism. That can be uh, cultural racism. We all, it's our flesh. Do you know this, that your flesh is completely racist? Inside of me lives the biggest racist, my friend. That's why I need mercy. And I tell you, my friends, you've got to crawl into God's presence. And you've got to say, Lord, forgive me. I need your mercy. But Jesus, I thank you for your grace. Now, Lord, the Spirit of the Lord, fill me with your love. I cannot love agape unless you change this heart of mine. Lord, give me your mercy. Give me your grace. Help me, Jesus. Fill me up. <laughs> Romans chapter 5, verse 5. Hope does not disappoint us. God, God pours his love into us. How? By the Holy Spirit. Yeah. You don't earn and work up love, my friends. You receive love. John 3, 27. A man can only receive what is given him from above. Yeah. Woo! Love. The Spirit of the Lord. Okay, now we'll do the next three together. Wisdom, knowledge, understanding. Knowledge is information. Understanding is experience. Wisdom is the ability to face a problem in life, have knowledge of the situation, understanding from experience, and use those two to bring a solution to that thing. All three of those are found in the presence of God. Yeah. Bible says that God gave Solomon knowledge, understanding, and wisdom beyond his years and more than anyone else in the whole world. Google inside of you. I'm not joking. I'm being dead serious. It's not funny. It's amazing. It's amazing. You have not because you ask not. It's amazing. You can have love for people. You can have wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. But my friend, you've got nothing if you cannot communicate that to people. And the spirit of counsel is the next manifestation. And what is counsel at its most basic form? The ability to speak. The ability to communicate. When I'm counseling you, I'm communicating with you and with me. Guess who empowers you to counsel? Woo! The Spirit of God. Moses, oh, I can't speak. Who made the mute tongue? Who made the deaf ear? Ah, the Spirit of God can anoint you and accord you to speak. Amen? My friend, you can have a golden tongue and the words can just slip off your mouth. You got nothing if you don't have the power to deliver the solutions and the things that you're selling. And there, the Bible says that He is the Spirit of power, energy, positive energy. New Age believers, think about that. Are you with me? That's nonsense. We believe in the Holy Spirit. He's our power. He's our energy. He's our life source. And He lives inside of me. And when I, you know, when you're much, isn't it sat? Track off, block to, gaan huis toe. What do you do? Wil die kerk toe gaan nie. Don't want to go to life group. Don't want to go to prayer meeting. My friend, take yourself by the scruff of the neck. Kick your backside. Get into the throne and say, God, help me! Ek soek die kraag! Amen! God, help me! I need your power! For those of you who don't speak Afrikaans. And then lastly, and this is the best one of them all. The spirit of the fear of the Lord. Yes. Now, for those of you religious, the fear of the Lord is not. I got my dirt mark. The fear of the Lord is this. Listen. The greatest definition of the fear of the Lord: an attitude that acknowledges one's absolute and entire dependence on God for everything and that apart from Him I can do nothing. That is what it means to live in the fear of the Lord. Woo! Jesus said John 15, apart from me you can do nothing. John 5 verse 9 Jesus says, I tell you the truth, the Son can do nothing by Himself. He can only see, He can only do what He sees the Father doing. He can only hear, say what He hears the Father say. Woo! If Jesus, the Son of God, had to access His presence to get His power to be His light on this earth, how much more sit on a hill do not you have to eat from that table and enter that throne room with His blood to receive these seven manifestations so you can be the city on the hill and the light that is going to take this gospel and is going to shine it to this clock stop, this South Africa, this continent, and the nations of the earth. Won't you stand your feet? I want to pray for you. While you're standing, let me explain to you why. I'm, you know, this verse, the light in the fear of the Lord, confused the heaven out of me. 
what do you mean? I mean, how can you, because I didn't understand the fear of the Lord, I didn't know what to delight in the fear of the Lord is. Let me tell you what it is. This is Bruce McAlpine by himself. This is Bruce McAlpine to the power of seven. So X times the power of seven. Seven manifestations of God's spirit. Bruce McAlpine operates there. And people look at him and they go, yes, lucky. But then I go, yes, lucky, but I can do so good. It's just, what are, I'm not that good. This is your ability. This is your ability anointed with the seven manifestations of the Spirit of God. And you are going, Woo-hoo! because I'm delighting in the fear of the Lord. Because I just know I'm not that good. How humble are you this morning? The Bible says that God opposes the proud and he gives grace to the humble. Humble yourself, therefore, under God's mighty hand, that he may raise you up. Lord, I want to pray for every businessman, every businesswoman, every minister of the gospel, every mom, every dad, every child, every student here. In Jesus' name, I'm asking for this morning, Lord, to end off this incredible service that we've had, for your spirit to be poured out upon City and Hill Church, to be poured upon Lighthouse, to be poured out on NCMI. And Father God, may we be a man and a woman, a movement that have confidence and boldness in our great God and the access we have into your presence. And may your anointing rest on us, Lord. And may we be humble and may be dependent on you for everything. And may you alone get the glory in this church now and forevermore. Let your kingdom come and let your will be done. In Jesus' name, amen.